Catholic. <laughs> that's it. That's well, Cats carry two deal. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what they get. Yeah. They, they only, yeah. I'm surprised about your mouth because you're always so complimentary of your animals.
We gather tonight, both in person and virtually, to begin our observance of Yom Kippur. This day is ours to use for quiet contemplation, for consideration of our behavior, for the chance to commune as individuals and as a sacred community with God to journey on the path of teshuva. We have the chance to set aside all our other obligations, all our other commitments, all the pressing matters of our lives to focus for a day on our inner well-being, whether by using the prayers offered in the books we hold, hearing the music that will be shared, raising our voices aloud, or simply closing our eyes and finding a renewed sense of peace after a most challenging year. Let us all take a deep breath at this moment together. And let it out. One more. Let it out. And embrace truly what this day affords us. The word... The song is Hashivenu. Let us return with an open heart to our faith and to all that it offers us. I'm going to ask everyone now to turn on their small light. As we turn down the lights. Save us, return us to who we were in days of old. Hashivenu, Hashivenu, Adonai Elecha. Amy.
We can t- turn off our candles. We're on the middle of page number six. I invite my wife Susan to the Bema to light the candles. Page number nine. Number nine. The human spirit is the lamp of God, searching out what lies within us. Guided by the flame of conscience, on this sacred night we search for truth. Shine your light upon us as we strive to serve you. May we find safety in your faithful love. We light the flame of healing and forgiveness. On this atonement night, we give thanks for love. On page number 14, I'm going to open the ark and ask everyone to please rise. We read these words responsibly. Yom Kippur, the Jewish people's festival of the soul, and Kol Nidre, its sacred portal. A night of deep emotions, a night, as the psalmist wrote, to rejoice with trembling. We rejoice at the sound of Kol Nidre, rhythmic words of release from vows, oaths, and promises to God we fail to keep. We tremble at the melody, music of spiritual amazement. It fills us with awe as we stand before God and We rejoice that we stand together, strengthened by community in this hour of shared weakness and humility. We tremble, for tonight we confess our flaws, admit our imperfection, and acknowledge a power far beyond our understanding. We rejoice that we hear ourselves together, because we give us so And think so nobly. We rejoice in the freedom that is Kol Nidre's true gift, the freedom to begin a new year without fear of failure, to aspire to be God's image in the world. We tremble because we are mortal. We rejoice in our gratitude for life. We rejoice with trembling and enter Kol Nidre to face our humanity. Thank you. 
On page number 25, we continue responsively. Day and night are yours, creative spirit of the universe, the muted colors of twilight, the radiance of dawn. Yours are the spreading wings of light, the deepening shadows of darkness, an ever-changing drama in the human heart, too. are embraced. All who reject emptiness and evil find acceptance from you. We come into your presence this night of Kol Nidre, aware that our shortcomings and weaknesses are many, yet encouraged by your promise of forgiveness, we choose freely the path of repentance, restoring wholeness to our lives and holiness to the world. Baruch atah Adonai HaMa'ariv Aravim. Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of twilight and dusk. And on page number 28, you are my witnesses, says Adonai. God is the first, God is the last. There is no God but Adonai. Testify for me, says Adonai. In your love for me, teach your children embracing Torah now and forever. We accept God's sovereignty in reverence, treating others with love, studying Torah. May this be our will as we witness. We rise once again. Shema Yisrael.
Please be seated. We continue on pages 30 and on to 32 with the words of the Vahavta. Please re- read these with me. Vahavta eit Adonai Elohecha bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol meodecha v'hayu hadivarim ha'ele asher anochi mitzavcha hayo al levavcha v'shinan tam levanecha v'dibarta bam v'shivtecha b'veitecha u'vlechtecha v'derech u'shoch becha u'vkumecha Ukshar tam liot al yadecha, vehayu latota fot vein enecha, uktav tam al mezuzot betecha, uvish arecha, lemaan tis keru vaasitem et kol mitzvotai, vihitem kedoshim lelohechem, ani adonai elohechem. Asher hoseti echem me Eretz Mitzrayim, liot lachem leilohim, ani Adonai Elohechem. Adonai, your God, is true. And continuing on page number 39, we continue responsively. Our sages taught It is proper to mention the exodus from Egypt in our morning prayers and also at night. We We celebrate celebrate the going going out from Egypt Egypt in the morning light, full of confidence and vigor as we enter the new day. But in the evening, weary from the day's exertions, cast down and fearful at the coming of the night, what can the exodus teach us then? Our nighttime prayer brings hope and trust in the future, as God did not abandon our people long ago through the long, dark night of exile. So the Holy One will be with us in time to come, to stand by the one you love. That is the true essence of faithfulness, the meaning of emunah. So it is written in the Psalms to proclaim your kindness in the morning and your faithfulness in the nights. Sing with joy in the mornings of your life, when light surrounds you and the world seems beautiful and good, and in the evenings of your life, when you you dwell dwell in in sorrow sorrow and the the world world seems seems dark. dark. Do Do not despair. despair. Page 43, when fears multiply and danger threatens, when sickness comes, when death confronts us, it is God's blessing of shalom that sustains us and upholds us, lightening our burden, 
dispelling our worry, restoring our strength, renewing our hope, reviving us. confession to make. This might not be the best time to be talking about food as we begin our observance of Yom Kippur, but food is on my mind. I'm not hungry. I had dinner, you know, very recently. It's just that over the past few months, I've been doing my share of what's called for those in the know binge watching. I've been binge watching a Food Network show. It's been on the air for many years, I have come to find out, but somehow only this summer I discovered it. And it's relevance, it's relevance to our High Holy Day season. The name of the show, many of you might know the show, it's called Restaurant Impossible. On the surface, the premise is quite straightforward, really. The chef, Robert Irvine, and his team attempt to revitalize ailing restaurants in less than 48 hours. The chef looks critically at each eatery and determines what the reasons are these places are not functioning well or why they're losing lots of money. The restaurants are located all across America. In fact, Robert and his team made it to East Town before the pandemic hit, breathing new life into Shea Olga, a local hub, canter for Caribbean food if you want to go there sometime. At the core of every episode is the heartfelt belief 
that Chef Robert can make possible a thriving business out of what appears to be an impossible situation. What I find particularly compelling about the show is the focus that he has on teshuva, rebuilding broken relationships between owners and staff, between managers and employees, and between the employees themselves. Over and over again, Robert teaches those at each location that possibilities for success are endless, that nothing truly is impossible unless what the practice of Musar teaches that anava pervades, anava, a sense of humility from the top to the bottom of the employment rung. To embrace anava does not mean that individuals need to be meek or shy. Rather, anava means that we adopt the heartfelt belief that we can learn from each other and that every single person has something of value to share. Most of the problems that Robert discovers are rooted in the reality that the loudest voices and the most aggressive perspectives seem to take precedence over what might be best for the business. To embrace anava, to embrace anava means that there are true possibilities for growth for all of us. Growth with family, growth with friends, inner growth as well, spiritual growth, deeper connections to God Almighty. If if we step back and allow others to teach us something that we might never have considered before. I don't know about you, but I have been in lots of situations with individuals who just love to talk, who don't give others the same opportunity. I think we've all been at gatherings where just a few people feel compelled to dominate the discussion, to espouse their every, and I mean every opinion, their every perspective, their every belief about what is happening in the world or not happening in the world. And the rest of us just want to say, enough already! Give someone else a chance by reminding ourselves that other people have thoughts to share, ideas to convey, and stepping back to allow them to do this, we grow from what we learn, and we also honor other people. Listening to others is an integral part of anava, of humility, to remind ourselves no matter how bright or intelligent we think we are, no matter our age or our station in life, we do not have all the answers. Tonight, with contrite hearts, and hopefully with a sense of humility, anava, we come into God's presence, hopefully ready to listen and ready to reflect on how we might make possible better days ahead, how we might construct for ourselves a better functioning version of who we are. The 19th century Hasidic master teacher, Yehuda Arya Leb Alter, offers us a teaching on humility. He cites the text of Proverbs 8.34, quote, Fortunate is the person who listens to me to be persistently at my doors every day. The me is in capital letters, meaning God. Fortunate is the person that listens to me persistently at my doors every day. Note the plural, doors. What does it mean to be at my doors every day? Don't most synagogues have one door that you enter into? Our temple has that back door. It's really one door you walk into. You come 
in from the parking lot and you're in. This is the question that rabbis had about this verse from Proverbs earlier than the 19th century. The Midrash says, if you go to a synagogue to pray, don't just stand inside the door that you've entered. Don't just stand inside. Enter a door inside a door. Enter a door inside a door. Two doors at least. For God counts your steps and gives you a reward. Now I can make a little more sense of Proverbs because at our temple and at most synagogues, when you enter the door that leads you from the outside in, you have to enter another door like that one over there or that one over there to get here, the place where we worship. The rabbis who crafted this midrash had a message in mind. They always have messages in mind. They wanted people to enter the prayer space and not just enter the building to mill about, where the refreshments might be. To enter into the place of prayer was a chance to come before God and hear the liturgy and the Torah and hopefully be inspired and moved by what was being said. All those who entered would be rewarded with growth and closeness to God. Aryeh Leb then added his perspective on both the verse from Proverbs and the Midrash. His view on those doors, those double doors, at least two doors was different. The rabbis were encouraging their community to enter the building, to feel a sense of safety and security and comfort in the prayer space, but Leb Alter saw the doors as metaphors. The doors is metaphors. Coming into temple through a door is but the first step of a lifelong journey through doors. One door begets another and another. He taught we should spend our lives going through doors. One door, two door, three, four, and so on, and so on. He taught we should spend our lives going through these, meaning always learning something new, always attaining something better. Our lives should be defined by anava, living with enough humility to realize that we don't know much at all, no matter how many doors we've gone through. Possibilities for growth are endless, as are the numbers of doors. Possibilities for living better never cease. It's impossible for us to even begin to scratch the surface of what is possible for us during our very short stay here on this earth. This is Kol Nidre. Whether we're here in person worshiping or via live stream, let's remember that life is filled with possibilities to learn and to grow to become better versions of ourselves. What my heart tells me is that what God wants from each of us is to have the humility, the anava, to understand that this is a lifelong pursuit, growth. If we think we've arrived, if we think we have all the answers, if we think we are the best version of ourselves, we are not listening. We are not listening. And if ever there was a time to listen, it is Yom Kippur. Amen. This be a year of love and kindness. May strangers come to be friends. May truth and compassion always guide us. Amen. May this be a year of hope and healing. For all of those
those in need. May all of our deeds be a blessing. Amen. A new year, a good year, a chance to start all over. A new year, a sweet year, a chance to bring us closer. May this be a year of selfless giving. May this be a year of peace. And may we forgive and be forgiven. Amen. A new year, a good year. A chance to start all over. A new year, a sweet year. A chance to bring us closer. Closer to the ones we love. A world that we can be proud of. Long as there are stars above, there comes a new We continue responsively. Tefila is a journey from the God of the ancients to my rock and my redeemer. On most, on nights, most nights, you stand, stand on, on the, the holy, holy summit, summit of Tefila to see before you a land that calls out for redemption, for healing, for peace, a world that needs you. Kol Nidre is different. Tefillah tonight. tonight is an inward journey that takes you deep within yourself, pierces you to the core. You stand on the holy summit of this tefillah and see before you the land within, a weary soul yearning to be forgiven, longing to be loved. We turn back to 46 and we rise for our tefillah.
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Avoteinu Ve'ivoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Ve'elohe Yaakov Elohe Sara Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Ve'elohe Leah Ha'el Ha'gadol Ha'gibor Ve'hanora El El Yon Gomel Chasadim Tovim Ve'kone Ha'kol Ve'zocher Chaste Avot Ve'imahot Umevik Ula Livne Ve'neyem Leman Shemo Be'ahava Zochreinu Lechaim Melech Hafez Bechaim Bechotvenu Besefer Hachaim Bechotvenu Besefer Besefer Hachaim Leman Melchoser hu Moshia hu Magen, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Avraham Ezra Tzara. Fifty in the English, your life-giving power is forever, Adonai, with us in life and in death. You liberate and save cause dew to descend, and with mercy abundant, lovingly nurture all life. From life to death, you are the force that flows without end. You support the falling, heal the sick, free the imprisoned and confined. You are faithful even to those who rest in the dust. Power beyond power, from whom salvation springs, sovereign over life and death, who is like you, merciful God, who compares with you? With tender compassion, you remember all creatures for life. Worthy of our trust, you sustain our immortal yearnings. In you we place our undying hopes, wellspring of blessing, power eternal. You are the one who gives and renews all life. On the top of page 53, we say together, you are holy, your name is holy. Seekers of holiness praise you day by day. Selah. Please be seated. In this part of the service begins three prayers that begin with the word uvechein. And I must say modern Modern interpreters of the prayer struggle with it. This is ancient language. Even in Israeli would have trouble with these words. And there's a prayer here, the third one, on page 56. Uvechein tzadikim yiru'u v'yismachu. The reason that I personally connect with this prayer is because of the third line in English there. Um, we're saying, God, in your holiness, give the righteous the gift of a vision. Okay, that, that's, okay, it's kind of heady, but a world where evil has no voice, that I can relate to. And the rule of malevolence fades like wisps of smoke. That's, that's, that's some good poetry there. And um, I'd like to share with you all uh, a way to, that we chant this that I, I learned in cantorial school called Chazanut in the way of the Eastern Europeans. <laughs> Thank you. 
page 63. Once again, we read responsibly, like smoke above the altar, may a memory of us ascend and come before you, as Israel once came to you with offerings from the flock. So the prophet taught, return, O Israel, to Adonai your God, for you have fallen because of your sin. Take words with you and return to Adonai. Page 72. <laughs> Page 79. 
Grant us peace, your most precious gift. O oh, eternal source of peace, and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the peoples of the that it may always be a stronghold of peace and its advocates among the nations may content betray within its borders health and happiness within its Strengthen the bonds of friendship among the inhabitants of all lands. And may the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. We praise you, O oh God, the source of peace. Page 81. Yiti yularat song imrefi the hegyon libi lefanecha. Adonai Tzuri Vagoali, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, source, soul of eternity, my rock and my redeemer.
are so many people in need of healing. So many people in need of healing of the body. So many people in need of healing of the spirit. As we begin Yom Kippur, this is just a small list of many that I know that you know who are in need of healing. Tonight we think of Winnie Ochter and Steve Dushman, Megan Yost, Jasmine Ryder, Nathan Bowes, Claire Gherkin, Anna Fisk. We think of Jeff Frank who's here tonight, Susan Waples, Alan Waples, Rivka Hodgkinson, Gita Cohen. We think of Irv Schwass, Stefan Ryder, Nelson Ryder. We think of Lisa Javery, Arlene Breyer, Arlene Posant, Joe Puplis, Adam Isaac, Tamara Wiggers, Marina Luber, we think of Shirley Lewis, Sue Reinecke, Paul Seegers, Sue Remus, Joan Camps, we think of Dan Mankoff, David Sherman Hay, Suzanne Lutwick, Ginny Fayan, Lawrence Krauss, Jack Luber, Shannon Hughes, Rose Malport, Robert Malport, Stanley Joseph, Connor Brom, Sharon Zack, Danny Richmond, Bert Gerards. We think of all those that we know, all those that we love, see their faces in our minds, say their names to yourself. We think of all of them, each and every one of them. We hope and pray for Rafuma, for Rafua Shlema, a complete healing for them all. Source of strength who 
or on page number 83. When I was young and learned the alphabet, life was open to me. A was full of aspiration, B was for beauty, C for confidence, and D for dreams, and so on through the list, no fewer than 26 opportunities, 26 possibilities. And yet I fear that with the passage of time, I've squandered them, creating instead A's of apathy, B's of brusqueness, and C's of coarseness. Help me then to return to that innocence. Let the letters be letters once again, and let them rise to the heavens and form into the words that you know I wish to say.
page number 86 we read these words together for these sins our God we ask forgiveness the ways we have wronged you deliberately and by mistake and harm we have caused in your world through the words of our mouths the ways we have wronged you by hardening our hearts and harm we have caused in your world through careless speech the ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit, and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. The ways we have wronged you by judging others unfairly, and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. The ways we have wronged you through insincere apologies, and harm we have caused in your world by mistreating a friend or neighbor. The ways we have wronged you through violence and abuse, and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty in business. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. we continue together the ways we have wronged you openly and secretly and harm we have caused in your world by losing self-control the ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink the ways we have wronged you by giving in to our hostile impulses and harm we have caused in your world through greed and exploitation, the ways we have wronged you through cynicism and scorn, and harm we have caused in your world through arrogant behavior, the ways we have wronged you by hating without cause, and harm we have caused in your world through offensive speech, the ways we have wronged you with a slanderous tongue, and harm we have caused in your world through a selfish or petty spirit. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. The Allah, 
Page number 99, we read these words together. Will you hear my voice, you who are far from me? Will you hear my voice wherever you are? A voice calling aloud, a voice silently weeping, endlessly demanding a blessing. This busy world is vast, its ways are many. Paths meet for a moment, then part forever. We go on searching, but our feet stumble. We cannot find that which we have lost. Perhaps my last day is already drawing near. Drawing close are the tears of parting. I will wait for you till my days flicker out, like Rachel waiting for her beloved.
Page 113. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice. Some of us have cancer. Some have lost strength of body. Some have lost memory and speech. Some of us are in pain. Some can't find work. Some of us bear the marks of human cruelty inside where the scars don't show. Some live with depression, some battle addiction. Many, many feel alone. Some have known shattered marriages, trust betrayed, hopes destroyed. Some have lost the ones we love far too soon. And some have lost a child. All of us have seen suffering in our midst. All of us know the ravages of war, for which there are no words. Avinu Malkenu, why? Avinu Malkenu, are you there? Do you care? Avinu Malkenu, hear our pain. Hear our anger, hear our grief. Avinu Malkenu, here is our prayer. Give us the strength to go on. Give us reasons to get up each day. Give us purpose and persistence. Help us to fend off fear and to hold on to hope. Help us to be kind. Don't make us bow or grovel for your favor. Give us dignity and give us courage. Avinu Malkenu, show us the way to a year of goodness. Renew our belief that the world can be better. Restore our faith in life. Restore our faith in you. Please rise. Oh, no. 
Join me, the bottom of the page. Avinu malkeinu, chauneinu vaneinu. Avinu malkeinu, chauneinu vaneinu, ki ein banu. Adon Hako, la teid gedula leotze er breishit, shelo asanu kugoye ha aratzot, belo samanu kemish bechot ha adama, shelo sam chalakenu kahem, ve goraleinu kechol hamona. Vanachnu korim umishtachanim uodim livnei melech malchei hamlachim hakadosh baruchu. The next page. Oh, no. 
remain standing for a moment. We're on page 122. We remember those that we have loved and lost, several taken from their families in recent days and weeks. We remember Dolly Ronis, mother of David Ronis, Michael Weisskopf, brother of Dan Weisskopf, uncle of Andrew and Brandon Weisskopf, Treyan Moga, father of Jack Moga, Ida Lopatuhina, grandmother of Olga Sukenik, and those whose yurtsites fall on Yom Kippur and this week, we remember Edith and Gerda Bartfeld, Edith Belfer, Jaime Broomberg, Robert Kagan, Max Eppinger, Tom Evans, Scott Finkelstein, Jacob Fuchs, Jane Fuchs, Marie Fuchs, Morris Fuchs, Alex Gitlin, Ruth Gitlin, Sophie Goldfarb, Shalom Horowitz, Ralph Katonik, Frank Kozak, Rose Kravitz, Hannah Landman, Joachim Landman, Ruth Lasky, Maurice L. Levin, Abel Lupa, Victoria Mayer, Tekla Nordwind, Marvin Olander, Brad Osborne, Marshall Pittler, Regina Rubinstein, Sam Smith, Abraham Shazinski, Helen Shazinski, Jacob Shazinski, Lily Shazinski, Ted Thurston, Stanley Warsaw, Edward Wetman, and Sam Wolf. We think of all of them as well of all those who died for our faith and those who perished in the Holocaust. Together on this Kol Nidre, let us say these words of Kaddish together. Once again, page 122, we say, Yitgadal v'yitgadah shemei rabah. Bialma divra chirute biyami malchute. Bechaye chon uviome chon uvchaye de chol beit Yisrael. Baagala uvizman kari vimaru. Amen. Yehe shemei raba menorach leolam alme almaya. Yitarach vishtabach vitpaar vitromam vitnase. Vit Hadar, Vit Alev, Vit Alal, Shemay de Kudisha, Arifu, Le Ela, Ul Ela, Nicole, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechemata, the Amiran, Bioma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shalam, Araba, Min Shemaya, Vichaim, Alenu, Vial, Kol Israel, Vimru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Bimromav, Hu yase shalom, aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael, v'yal kol Yoshvei Tevel, v'imaru. Amen. May the source of peace bestow a peace on all who mourn, and may the source of comfort to all who are bereaved, may we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved, and we say, Amen. Please be seated. I want to thank our cantor and all of our musicians for their Incredible music tonight, their joy on the holiday so far has just been so infectious and wonderful. We are so happy to have you and all of our musicians here uh, this season, so thank you. And speaking of the musicians, I'd like to thank them all personally. Behind me on the conga drum is Milt Cernick. We have Phil Pletcher at the piano. Um, We're very pleased to have our guest cellist, William Pierce right over here, and um, we have wonderful congregants who joined us, Kathy Osborne on the flute and on the larynx, and um, (laughs) joining us soon to help close our service will once again be um, Mary Schwass and Amy Ostro, so thank you to them. A couple of young men, didn't we, come up as well, whose B'nai Mitzvah was a few months ago? Oh my gosh. The Alto Murano. Isaac and Ethan Alto Murano. Isaac and Ethan Alto Murano. I'm so glad to get them up here. Thank you very, very much, boys. We're going to hear more from you in the future. I'm not asking, I'm telling you. <laughs> Couple of announcements for tomorrow. We have beautiful music all day tomorrow. Beautiful worship. 10:30 begins our morning service at 1:15 or so. Those that wish to do some studying and chatting with me, we're going to be looking at an article from this book that I'm hoping you picked up either on Rosh Hashanah or you can pick one up tonight on the way out. There's a wonderful article here that we're going to be talking about 
under the tent outside about 1.15 or so. Three o'clock is our family service under the tent. Last week, the hour for family service, we had almost a hurricane. We had to cancel the service. Tomorrow, it looks beautiful. Three o'clock under the tent. 4.15 or thereabouts begins our afternoon service with some prayers for healing. Five o'clock or thereabouts our Yisker service, and following that we have our concluding uh, and uh, Nila service. What have I forgotten? Oh, I've forgotten on the uh, clarinet, Michelle Benjamin. Yes. I'm going to ask you all to rise as we end our service. I'm going to ask for the lights to be turned down once again, and we're going to begin the song that we began with, as soon as the lights are down and really off. So I'm gonna step aside here. fast for those fasting. Hope you join us tomorrow for additional worship. <laughs>